session number 2B. This is the second uh, part of the second session on day two of Hearing Stream 2 into the combined Mardipur combined Wairapa district land hearing. Um, the committee we have is the Mardipur Community Board represented by Ms. Crow. Um, welcome. Thank you Thank for coming in Thank you. earlier. Um, we have a two page summary of your concerns. I'll, I'll invite you to read us, take us through that, and then we'll um, see if we've got any questions. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure how long I've got to speak, but my, uh, we, you've been allocated uh, 15 minutes. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm used to getting five minutes at our council meetings. I'm lucky. Right. So, um, my name's Karen Crow. My profession, I'm a registered architect and I've had 40 years of practice in architecture, so I have some experience and things to do with buildings and uh, services generally for construction. We are concerned um, to promote alternative wastewater systems in uh, Martinborough at the moment because we have a problem in that respect with our centralised wastewater system is no longer functional or accepting any further connections. Um, since my written submission late last year, there's been no progress made in the design and costing of a suitable new reticulated wastewater system for Martinborough, unfortunately. It seems to have gone around in a few circles and there's talks now of consulting with a, a, a bigger group of people to see if we can do this. I'm not quite sure it is so complex. Um, we don't even know how expensive it's going to be, but there's a lot of fear that it will be uh, an incredible sum of money that we won't be able to find, but we don't even know what it is. At this rate, it could be five years or more before there'll be any further waste connections accepted for new dwellings. And that's just a guess, really, because we don't really know what the plan is. There are still quite a few, uh, there's still quite a number of the original quarter acre sections in, in the village of Martinborough suitable for subdivision. So originally the village of Martinborough, well, the main village, which is called Martinborough after John Martin, was divided into quarter acre sections. So quarter acre is approximately a thousand square metres. Uh, and as such, these site, these sections, as is the vernacular term, are divisible into two quite good sized lots. So even with you know your driveways and your access ways, you'd end up with a good 400 plus square metre if these sections are divisible in two, and a lot of them have been divided like that, and it creates two, as I say, two good-sized lots, really. It's quite a good result to grow in the town. And there now are very efficient small wastewater systems available, suitable for installation on sites of this size. These systems treat the wastewater to a point where it can be applied to the soil on the site by drip-fed irrigation lines. The sort of ballpark estimate for the cost of these systems doesn't appear to be completely prohibitive. I did some research this week and I got prices of around $14,000 to $20,000 installed. That's what we would call in my profession a ballpark figure. So, you know, it's, it's, is it bigger than a breadboard or is it smaller than a bus? So we're talking about around about fourteen to twenty k for a good system in place. So um, given the value of good residential property in Martinborough, it makes it a good potential option for new builds. That would only be about 2% to 3% of a $500,000 build. Um, so it's not, it's not prohibitive in terms of cost. And when the central waste system becomes available again, the treated waste can simply be discharged into it instead of onto the site as irrigation. So you don't have to take it out, you don't have to do anything, you can just simply put that discharge into the new system. This also reduces the loading on the central system, given that the wastewater has already been treated to a really good level. There's no downside to this. At the moment, the wastewater plant in Martinborough is dysfunctional. It is discharging untreated or partially treated waste into the Ruamahanga River, which ultimately goes into Lake Wairarapa. So for the efficient systems to be installed has absolutely no downside. It's actually a better solution to what's happening at the moment. There might be other options proposed for the temporary management of wastewater to new dwellings. 
until the new reticulated system is in place. There's talk about holding sump, you know, wastewater and taking it to your lovely town here or the town of Carterton, where apparently there is extra capacity in the wastewater system. But anyway, this system that I've just described has the advantage of proven high level of perform levels of performance and of being available right now. Small self-contained wastewater treatment systems in residential zones are currently consented by several authorities in the country. Uh, for example, Queenstown, they're doing this already. Now, if we look at our district document, which I have, um, <laughs> in all its glory and wonderful number of pages, you wonder whether it's still fit for purpose as it gets more and more rules added to it. 40 years in practice, these documents get bigger and bigger and bigger. I see it used to be two, doc two volumes, now it's one. So is that progress? Anyway, in this document, subdivision rule, sub, sub S4, refers to wastewater disposal. This is in subdivisions. And the quote, the relevant quote seems to be that as a matter of discretion, number three, where a central system is unavailable, all allotments must be provided with a septic tank, soakage field, or an approved alternative means to dispose of sewage in a sanitary manner within the net site area of the allotment in accordance with Council's engineering standards. So that seemed to be the relevant, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that was the relevant clause in the plan that's, you know, relevant to what we're talking about. And it says it's a matter of discretion for the council. So it's just certainly not saying that they can't do it um, in accordance with the engineering standards. However, if if we go to the, uh, which I have done, to Mount Borough Council today, and we ask for those engineering standards so that we can make a, a use of this very good alternative while the uh, central system is unavailable. There are no rules. They, they have not uh, prepared any suitable standards, rules, conditions and specifications for a standalone wastewater treatment. So at present, there are no available that are consentable by our council, our council in Martinborough. And this needs to happen. This needs to be um, encouraged. As I say, I don't think there's any downside to it. The cost of it seems to be, you know, perfectly within within what what could be uh, commercially acceptable. They perform well. They can be linked into the system when it's up and running again. And in the short term, they're not polluting our lake in the way that our existing system is. In actual fact, it's a better option. So well, just to conclude, I'm saying that it's essential for continual residential growth and development to be possible. It is essential for, for that to be possible, Martin Borough Village. There are a few people who say, well, that's all right. We're in a downside in the um, downturn in the cycle. I've been through five of these cycles of boom and bust in the construction industry. And we certainly are in a bit of a slump. And people say, oh, we like our small town. It can just say the way it is. Well, it's not an option ever to simply pause development until the new infrastructure is in place. We don't even know when that's going to be. A town which cannot grow will inevitably decline. Thank you, Ms. Um, just, before, mm -hmm. just before I um, invite questions from the panel, can I just say that uh, there's been a lot of discussion on the Marlborough Wastewater System over the last two days of this hearing. Ah, um, I've missed that. Intriguing. Does yeah. it have any bearing on what I've said? Possibly. Um, and it was, the panel was conscious of the issues that Martinborough is facing, but also conscious that the issues, not just from, for Martinborough, but for some other yeah. townships, they break down. And I'm just talking as Martinborough Community Board, but yes, I'm aware that the same issue is in Greytown, for example. Um, I'll come to questions from me in a moment. Just in the meantime, I'll just um, open questions from the panel, uh, starting with Robin. Oh, may, um... Thank you for your presentation and your submission. Just a quick question. I, I note that um, your submission is on behalf of the Martinborough Community Board. Yeah. Um, just from a, a governance point of view, is there a resolution from the Community Board um, that... Um, 
backs up the the authorizers thank you authorizes the sub ah good question um the original submissions and there's also one another one from my colleague who's the chair i believe storm robinson they were these original submissions were made back in december and I'm a, I do believe we did pass a resolution at one of our meetings that we would be submitting, but um, perhaps I can sort that out. It's an important it, procedural it, issue, right. Pro, because um, if we're not questioning, we're just wanting to add some evidence that you are speaking. Have the authority to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you could pass um, any written resolution through to Ruth that you met earlier. Sure, sure. Uh, okay. You could email that. That would be do, if I can track that down. Yes. The alternative, and in the event that uh, authorization was not given, um, we would have to treat your submission as a private submission. Okay. In your own name. Okay. okay. Understand. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's quite a uh, quite a while ago now. I can't. Yes. Absolutely recall it, but I do believe that was raised. Something we're checking with all submitters, so don't feel that we're um, we're picking on you. We're not. We're making sure that everyone has authority to speak. Fair enough. No, if it helps you date-wise, um, your submission was the 16th of December, so I would yeah. assume I have, it would be meeting prior to that. Yeah, I do have that. that yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do a check. I, do, I don't have all the minutes of the Martin Murray Community Board meetings on, my, on me at the moment, but I will check it. <laughs> Um, no, not from me for the moment, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, for your submission. You, you state in uh, here that systems and residential zones are currently conceded by several local authorities around the country, for example, Queenstown. Now, is that in a residential zone or is it an urban? In, what lots of leaves open? What lot sizes were we looking at there? I'm not sure. I mean, I did. I've talked to suppliers. I was more. I've been more focused in to in um, you know real immediate resolutions in our part of the country. Yeah. So I I haven't done a lot of research into exactly what what has been consented there, but um, yeah. no doubt that information would be retrievable if anyone's interested. It would be. But I do know that they are consented. Least in, in an urban environment. Yes, in residential zones. Absolutely. I mean, this is what we're totally talking about. It's not, you know, obviously in in Martinborough, for example, as soon as you're outside the limits of our village and you're into the into the uh, rural zones, uh, septic tanks are always the you know the the way to deal with wastewater anyway you know it's only really in the in the residential zones and the villages that there's been a centralized system available at all yeah Craig was there anything else yes thanks Karen uh, look I'm just reading um SUB S4 at the moment yeah I um, mean it does say um that so I suppose leading on from what you've asked for that's sort of covered in there and when you link it to the next part to rural zones it seems rural people don't have a problem with meeting the council engineering standards. So I would assume, maybe incorrectly, but the council engineering standards would be the same for your alternative solution that you're looking at. Well, they may be, but this is a huge assumption to make. And when I went to the council, because I actually do have a client who would like to, you know, subdivide their quarter acre at the moment anyway. So, and also, and also you know, because of the, bigger issue, I've been to the council offices there and Kitchener Street and asked that question and there was no information available. Um, the person who tried to help me, who was a, an employee of Wellington Water, said that they, he didn't believe that had any requests for this at all, you know, in the, in the residential zone. So there's no, although obviously the plan, the district plan does not preclude it, it actually says, you know, as we say in that clause, that it, it's, what's the word they use, a matter of discretion, there is no, there are no guidelines that I that I was able to, to find, and as you say, there are septic systems used all over the rural part of the town, but obviously they also have a lot more land associated, so there will need to be rules about the minimum size of a site to have a system like this, obviously. 
you've got to have a reasonable bit of land to discharge the the uh, the water that ends the treated water and all that sort of thing. So you can't do it on a postage stamp. So how big is the minimum site? Those are the sorts of things that need to be defined. There needs to be a rule for it. And it can happen tomorrow. There's no, it doesn't have any so to me. Just to clarify, then you're not looking for something in here that determines what system you can put in, but the rules around what system would meet those. Would exactly, meet. exactly. I mean, in some areas of the building code and activity, for example, solid fuel burners, wood burners, I believe I haven't dealt with that in. South Warapa, but I have in Wellington that the, you know, there are certain models that are specified that they know, for example, burn that fuel to a standard that it's the emissions are acceptable for you know air pollution, and they'll actually state particular models. So I'm not really imagining that that would be necessary to because to, to specify the exact model. It might be, but you know what? What are the rules? There are no rules at the moment. We want to use these things. We want to get the consent. We're going to build a house, subdivide our section of Martin Borough. We're, we're proposing to use one of these small standalone wastewater systems. What are the rules? At the moment, there, there are none. But I've, got, I've been down there. I've been told there are none. And I think they need to fairly quickly get their act together and get some suitable rules around. Thank you, Ms Crow. Um, I had a similar question to Commissioner Plummer. Um, the subdivision S4 rule that you've cited um, is what's known as a default rule. It's so activity, subdivision activity is a controlled activity in the zone, right? And we and subject to meeting certain standards. And standard um, requires all new allotments to be connected to the council's reticulated wastewater right. system. Where you don't meet that standard, you then trigger down to the next activity status, which is Restricted discretionary, discretionary uh -huh. and hence the term matters of discretion. So, um, one of the one of the matters that the council will consider where there's no connection is 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 um, you know the availability of alternatives such as septic tanks, soakage pits, or any other approved alternative means. Right. So, my question to you is, given that framework in the district plan. Is there anything that needs to be changed by this panel? Isn't the framework there already to enable alternative systems to be considered? It is, but I'm wondering that it needs there needs to be perhaps some sort of obligation for authorities to get those guidelines together. Yes, but wouldn't that obligation sit outside the district plan process? And, and it may do. It may do. And it may be. It may be. Maybe uh, involve um, a review of the standard, uh, the engineering standards, and or the bylaw that that operates. Well, at the moment, there doesn't seem to be any. Well, our local authority doesn't appear to have any such guidelines okay. available. You know, they don't actually even have them. So, I'm just all I'm suggesting is that um, this panel may not have any jurisdiction. No, no in that area. No, that, that's for the for the South Warrapa District Council to perhaps consider. Yes. So, but then, I mean... With the council? Have, have you sat down with, with the council and gone through this, I suppose, to, because obviously rural, when, when people do a rural subdivision, they do it and you've got to submit all your um, wastewater yes. treatment things. I would assume that um, when you submit to do a, um, something in the in, in the zone that you're talking about now, you'd have to actually provide the same detail. And of course, they'd assess it on the basis because every slot, every zone will be, every parcel will be slightly different because of the, the yes. nature of the land, of course, as you well know. Yes, the difficulty is, I mean, it's not, it's not really, um, I mean, I'm not at the stage of any particular project that I'm ready to submit uh, a resource consent application for it. But you know, in all the work that I've done, you, you'd want to know the, the rules and the guidelines before you did that anyway. You know, you, stop, you, you don't want to sit down and start talking about an elaborate, you know, I, I you know how many drawings and specifications that you end up doing for a particular proposal. You wouldn't want to get to that point and be applying for your resource consent before you even you know, found out what the guidelines were. I mean, it's like the cart before the horse. You really need, we need to have some 
We understand that. Yeah. <laughs> we understand that. Interesting, Ms. Crow, is that um, this might be a matter that you want to follow up in your role as a member of the Ladenbrook community. Yes, it is. Um, I, you know, as I looked at it and looked at the legislation in the last week, and then, you know, and said, well, look, there's nothing in it that says you can't actually do this. But the practicality of it is that, right? It's not. It's a discretionary thing, and it's not. It's not. Sure banned or anything but it's not it's not okay facilitating in any way this sort of thing at the moment okay we'll just see if there's any questions or clarification from the officers no, nothing no. okay well we understand what you're saying <laughs> um if you could follow up with a query from um, the deputy chair about the authorization so what? um thank you for your presentation thank you thank you We would during the hearing um, at this stage until tentatively one o'clock. Um, on the basis that we might be able to. Oh, they're not coming. Don't we? Uh, they were doing, they still are at 12. Oh, are they still, still doing? Oh, okay. Both. Okay. We're doing the hearing until 12 15. And. Um, Can we get up? Six one. Yeah. Sorry. And we'll see how we're placed at that point in time. Thank you.